Welcome back to another review of Power Book 2. Nigerian Lucas here, and we're ready to break down episode five, the mid-season finale, which we now know that won't be returning until right. December. There's been a little bit of rumors going back and forth about that, but yes, confirmed that it's not going to be returning back to December. Um, so that gives it gives us like a month break of coverage. <laughs> Man, that's, that's a that's a COVID size break. That gotta be what this is. It gotta be true what that. This is. True that. That's a good point. Um, but uh, yeah, tonight episode, The Gift of the Magi, which is actually something I was familiar with. So it was kind of interesting when I once when I finally <laughs> seen the title. I was like, oh, I know the story. We'll kind of talk about that a little bit in this review. Uh, but tonight was a crazy episode. And to be honest, yeah. as, as much as this felt, I mean, as much as this is a mid-season finale, this almost felt like a finale. Like yeah, how it just is. really left a lot off here. Like they revealed a lot. And you know some 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 power power s story yeah. things that happened that I have questions about. We are gonna talk For about. Sure. It. I just For got sure. questions about a couple of things. I definitely do too. Like man, because I ain't no drugs can do that to you and then make you go home and change an outfit and then go back out again. <laughs> man, man, I don't know what drug he was on, but I think she said Zoloff. Did she say so? It was she. She was saying something. It had and, to be. It still had to be like some, I don't know. I ain't going to act like I even know what it was, but wow at that. <laughs> the moment the moment he showed up in a different outfit, I said, come on that. Come on. Yeah. I, come I on. mean, come on. I now. definitely was questionable. I was like, wait, did he dream all of that? Oh, that really exactly. Oh, okay. That's... So so maybe I dreamed it then. <laughs> maybe right. she maybe she built pill calls me me too. Like hey, and he passed out immediately, but woke up. Immediately, like, I was oh. yeah, I was confused. I, I don't know, I don't know what drugs you on. I really don't know what drugs you on, but that I had questions. But again, it's power, so power is yeah. Some, Co- things, Co- some things we let go. Courtney Kemp, you know, gotta do her little magic every once in a while. Hey, it's some, it's hey, something else I'm gonna get on her about. Uh oh, uh oh. But uh, I will say, like for, for real, the the promo uh, for the December announcement was pretty cool with the chessboards. I think yes. that's really well done. Um, and I think like while everybody's comparing who's who, I mean now we legitimately can get comparison based on their pieces on the chessboard. So mm-hmm. yeah, let's stop all that. I think they're Tommy and all this other stuff. Now we can just, now we can almost legitimately say like who's really is what chess piece, and I we'll talk about that at a future date. Cause I think that's going to play key because you know, there's a lot of assumptions and even though they had faces to people, there was one face in the middle. I was Tariq and it's going to be left to seeing is Tariq mm-hmm. really the king of everything that's happening here. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right. But tonight episode, we're going to break this down just a little bit different. Now, typically we kind of go through the episode and talk about points, but there's a lot happening all over. So what I want to do is I want to talk about each character at a time. Ah, Okay. So I'm going to let you pick a person and then we can break down what happened with this person in this episode and we'll kind of go back and forth with that. <laughs> so I'm going to start off clearly with your favorite character. Oh, oh yeah. Ghost uh, Power 2. <laughs> I always get confused the way to say it. I'm going to start with Mr. Jabari because, man, listen. Um, <sighs> niggas will be niggas. That's the hundred percent. That's all I got from him in this entire episode. Mm-hmm. You can't preach the high and mighty road of this is what you got to do. You can't let black people down. And then in the end, you steal every idea that someone else had to make it. You he's the definition of the crab in a barrel. Yep. Where 100%. he sees Tariq attempting to come out and he pulls him right back down again. And then he steals from the crab. Like it's it's <laughs> It is crazy. I think I think we learned a lot with his interaction with I want to say that a book editor. I'm guessing that, that dude was supposed to be a publisher? book editor. Yeah, because he's with the, he's with the publishing company, and normally that's the editor he, that meets with okay. the author to go yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming I'm assuming that, but I like their interaction because it led us into a little bit of his past and how he's used to interacting with people mm-hmm. versus how he's viewed now after his flop. Yeah. So for the guy to even come out and say like, hey, uh, your next book don't work. We got to drop you or yep. I've moved above you. Like <laughs> they got me working with the white authors now. Mm-hmm. So me bringing anything from you has to be twice as good. Like it, mm-hmm. 
it's a nice dynamic of showing someone who can put him in his place, which mm -hmm. is what he's been missing through the first half of this mm -hmm. season. I well, so as much as I'm going to criticize Courtney in this episode, which I never do. One thing that I think she did a really good job at is not making him in a fraternity because this reeks, <laughs> this reeks fraternity up and down divine. Mm -hmm. eye, it reeks it. Yes. And there's no way that she would want to label that because she knows the backlash will be yeah. monumental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. yes, he he is absolutely, you know, in my notes is looking at this like the first thing I say is, oh, here we go with this culture talk again. But like yep. beyond everything you say, which I totally agree, I don't want to just uh, reiterate it, is the other thing I'll add is just the Toscan masculinity here. Hey, full of it. Just, just do... This dude, like, even, and I, I really hate how this episode tried to play that nice, upbeat, sorrow music as if he did something good. <laughs> I'm like, nah, you're not fooling me with that Tariq did something good in that scene, but don't try to sell us on Jabbar, who's still being a typical dude who proved it uh, later mm -hmm. on in the episode after that initial scene had happened. Look, I'm not fond of this dude, and this did nothing for me. Yeah, I do I do like the fact that we get a little bit of his background, and I don't think I would have actually pinpointed it to being such, but, like, it's 100% confirmed. Like, this dude is a fuckboy up and yes. down the board. Yes. He 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 always tries to... And, and the thing that, like, for anybody that listens to this, probably are predominantly power fans, but for anybody who's just wandered across this review just because of what... There's a good message to be taken out of this. And that's that do not let somebody try to overshadow you with clout to try mm. to portray a good message that is a, a, a foolery in his own entirety. Like yes. he's trying to he's trying to say something that's smart and he's trying to vouch with it with something with the culture. But at the same time, his foundation is not even stern enough for him to even make that statement. So, like, everything he's saying about uplifting and working Tyson's heart definitely sounds good. I'm with you for a little bit till I realize, like, oh, who's saying this? By the way, can't believe nothing he's saying because we know how this how this dude is. And it didn't take <laughs> but long for him to say, I can't figure out how to write. Well, I need to I need to write about this this girl I'm having this situation with. And she's no longer saying she wasn't going to we'll talk about her in a second, saying she won't going to fall mm. for it again, which we know that's a lie. But Clearly. he's like, oh, nah, now nah, I don't have nothing to write about. Oh, let me steal my student paper that I've been hating on the entire time. Mm. And nah, I hope I hope somehow, and I know we'll never get to this in this show, but I hope somehow he tries to put out a book with it and Tariq figures out his, his writing and he sues the bricks off of him I and think, ruins his whole everything. I think what's going to happen is he is going to attempt to put a book out. It's going to have that passage in it and... Uh, Carrie is going to read it and know because he's not the only person that's going to end up seeing Tariq's paper. Yeah. And she's going to know where it came from and it, blackmail some 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 power scenario down the line. <laughs> blackmail <laughs> or everything else is going to happen to him because of this moment. But as you said, he's a, he's technically, technically, and this is normally a word we use for people outside of our race when it comes to certain things with our culture. He is technically a culture vulture. Oh, 100%. 100%. He is somebody who's feeding off of it without attributing anything to it. But that's why I also say that scene, again, was so good with him and the editor is because you clearly see he comes from a place of being superior to everyone. So now it makes more sense when Carrie says, I got you this job. Mm. So now I would like to see, it doesn't have to be a full flashback. I would like to see him at his height, which is when that book was, his first book came out and everything he got versus his decline. <laughs> and because that decline to me is him. That's yeah. what, that's what separates possibly the good part of him. That was when the first book came out versus the part we see now is that decline that happened from book one to book two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm not fond of dude. There's no secret to that. Uh, five episodes dealing with this guy. Not a not a fan. And I don't. I'd be glad if this is the last time we see him, which I know is not possible. But like he's done nothing for me. But like he's legitimately the epitome of the issue within the African-American community, period. And wow. on top of that. And on top of that, I can see this also leveraging at some point of him 
needing Tariq in order to get his plateau, which mm. him wanting to do Tariq a favor in doing so. Like I, it's gonna it's gonna be some fuckboy shit coming up last. I, there's no redemption <laughs> story here. Don't count on it. And oh, uh, no, not at all, not at freaking all. And if some in the power book ways of it do flipping, do not anybody come for me. I am not giving him any bit of it, gratitude. It, the only way it's flipping is if Kane goes to kill Tariq and he jumps in front of the bullet <sighs> and he shoots Monet and him and Tariq take over the opera. It better be something stupid. I need it. I need it say, to be. You know what? I didn't see that coming. Other than yep. that, I don't want you to redeem this character. I was me neither. I gave this dude a shot. I was literally arguing with you about mm -hmm. he's making good points, but every time he made a good point, he would counter it with something <laughs> negative. Tempo, <laughs> like, dude, yeah. we, straight Tyra Banks. Like we were rooting for you. <laughs> like no, no, him mm -hmm. and the other one, both of them. These are these are the worst professors to have. Where were these <laughs> professors when I was in college, man? No bull, no <laughs> Shit. bull, no bull. Oh man! All right, I'm going next here, and I'm going to pick Brayden, who I've been calling Braylon for some odd reason, but Brayden nonetheless, and he deserves to have his name right because no, he deserves to be Bray Braylon Brayden. He, yeah. he need a little black on his name after this episode. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so number one, I'm gonna give a shout out to um, back in the day, the Incredible Hulk pull up because if you know, hey. you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. The moment hey, look. they said it, when he said hypnotic, I said. Oh, kids hey. still like doing the Incredible Hawks. Hey, if Riley knew a little something, she didn't even have to drop the pill. She could have gave him a double shot of the Incredible Hulk. That would have carried that'd Tariq. Have <laughs> yep, that'd have been it. You learned everything you want to know. But um, what I liked about Brayden in this episode is number one, he realized that Riley was overstepping her territory, mm -hmm. and I love that because okay, everybody who wants to compare him to Tommy is another contrast. Tommy gets in love and gets dumb. Brayden hey, yep. <laughs> got in love and got smart. He says, yep. why are you checking for him so much? Like, don't worry about that. You know, some real stuff. So I appreciate that. And, you know, to give props to Courtney for that, if that was by design to make a statement here about the contrast between the two characters, then we'll execute mm -hmm. it. But yes. um, number one, yeah, this dude definitely wants to be all types of black. I have never, ever, ever... <laughs> <laughs> ever been first of all let me tell you let me tell you why i can religiously say he wants to be black without it sounding like a slander he tried to go to the liquor store that don't car and we all know that that liquor store that he went to was uh, was in that territory where zeke went to which means that there's no way they both would have went to the same store knowing they won't get a car unless it was a spot <laughs> that he picked up on from everybody else, because look what he ordered. He, he ordered said, I want the whole Hennessy. row of Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He put one and two together there, y'all. All his white side away, because white, <laughs> they, they've been like, let me get some Captain Morgan. They'd have got some Bacardi. They'd have got something else. This dude <laughs> said, give me the whole row of Hennessy black. He didn't even say Hennessy. He said yeah. Hennessy black. Yeah. I think you he know? ordered BSOP. He was hey. Exactly. He spent that bread. I, I would have pulled up to that party. Hey, he ordered all that. the nigga versions of Hennessy. That's what he ordered. Riley tried <laughs> to say no one drinks it. Not he. He let it. He let it know what it do. But hey, nah, nah. white people don't know about the Incredible Hulk. Oh nah. And clearly oh, that's because nah. he's around black folks. Oh nah. And look, if they would have had Brandon go with some uh, French connection, I probably would have cut the episode off. I'm like, now y'all, now y'all, <laughs> now y'all trolling now. <laughs> now y'all trolling. <laughs> Hey, maybe maybe next episode. Maybe next episode oh break out with a French connection. But uh seriously, what I what I do like is that um one putting Riley into place. I thought that was um I thought that was just again showing the con the contrast between him and Tommy, but also mm -hmm. just showing him as a person. We we're, we're still continuously um seeing this character develop. Um him throwing a party, I thought was a really cool thing because it also shows his appreciation for his brother oh. Tariq. Shall we say yeah. they're roommates, but they're they're getting tighter. Um, and he, you know, inviting Tariq friends that that conversation he even had mildly with Zeke. I thought didn't feel like he was temp timid or anything. He was just like, yeah, I'm doing this for Tariq. It is what it is. Pull up with your boys. Um, Brayden and his brother also had 
you know, that dynamic where like he looked over at he respected Tariq more than he respected his brother. Yeah. Um, and I also when his other girl came in there, he 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 came and let he him did, know right hey, away. He did the man so, move right there. Yeah. So he did the man move. There's there's definitely a lot to take with that character, but I think the important part to kind of talk about with this character is now he has obtained the knowledge of how the system works. Mm -hmm. And although he becomes a little comical about it, we know that he actually grasps this information. No matter how he may respond, like he he hasn't totally been a hot boy like we've seen in the past. I think now, like now that he has that information, um, we again to the beginning part of this episode, we just see Braden diving in trust in in Tariq having his back like a brother Tariq finally reciprocated and said this is what the system is 100% mm -hmm. I can't wait till we talk about Tariq but I think now that we're seeing a bond between the two of them that's going to really protect what they got going on they even got gestures and codes in case something goes down and Brady never questioned any of it he's just like all right I'm on board and it's been established that he's right he's privileged and he has and he um and he has money, you know, when uh Riley was having a conversation with Sack. So, like all this that she's di that he is potentially diving into, he could have easily be like, uh, this is too much. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I got you. So, like, you know, I you know, for five episodes right now, and I think we've seen them probably a total of seven. Um, it's been a really interesting story arc <clears> with him. <throat> um, and not to mention, because we're not gonna name this person as a character, but Braylon's brother, who seemed to have found the stash that was supposed mm. to be really secretly hidden. I we're gonna truly see how much of Tariq brother Braylon is because I don't think it's a question he not gonna stand for his brother doing that. So um good episode by him, and um I was just a tad bit disappointed first of all oh i can't forget one of the most important thing him telling Tariq that he owed him an apology lets you know that brain is not a pushover too he could have easily just swiped his hand with him and said whatever but he said nah i did all that for you and you you know acted you the way you did tried to shit on me and i mm -hmm. did all of that for you i and think I, that's the evolution of this character that we're seeing right now is that we assume unfortunately that mm -hmm. he will be a soft Mm -hmm. kind of slow kind of naive character and instead what they shown is he's a thoughtful character like he, he's he's literally thinking out moves and mm -hmm. it's really important when he said without me the app wouldn't be succeeding mm -hmm. like he's letting you understand just how smart he is and just how much of a key call he is to what Tariq is doing but how much of a friend he is to Tariq mm -hmm. at this point he is Tariq's best friend Mm -hmm. hands down and only your best friends can hold you accountable the way he did at the end of the episode but only your best friends can support you like he did in every other part of this episode mm -hmm. like that, that that's something that we needed to see because again along with those comparisons with him being tommy and it's only because he's white that those comparisons even come out now that we understand that that's not going to be the case with this character it's more interesting to see as he grows, what will he allow and won't what won't he allow? Yeah. And, and again, the brother test at the end of that episode is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to stand firm because, again, he could have loose lips. He could have been loose lips to rally and he didn't. He was conservative in his answers. And then he completely said, you know what? We're not talking about this no more. And to kind of go back into a point that you just brought up about his intelligence you, we do realize that Tariq explained to him how the system worked through chess, and that's not a given because I know plenty of people who don't know how, who mm -hmm. don't know how to play chess. Yes. So that's in order okay. to take something that's high level, that's completely competitive, um, the fact that he was able to s explain the drug game to him in that fashion lets you know, like, we're not dealing with idiots here. Yep. You know. So hey, playing check, what they always say. It. We're not playing checkers. We're playing chess. Mm -hmm. so, it's all about the moves you make. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Brayden, definitely uh, very fond of, of, of this character's uh, arc thus far. Um, mm. And this, this the, like you said, the, the, the thing with him and his brother is going to be super interesting. All right, so hold up. So then, I mean, I'm up next. So, the character I want to talk about next is Drew. Okay. Because on this episode, I think 
we get even a grander picture of the person that he is. I assumed, and I know a lot of the people assume that his family didn't necessarily know about Correct. him being gay. And it comes out, no, the family completely already knows about him being gay. It, it's it's just the way he portrays the lifestyle. I he, think he, I, I just want to ask on real quick. I just mm-hmm. want to be clear that we we know that Monet knew. We knew that Diana knew. It was just a, it was the matter if Kane knew, but we pretty sure was certain that his father didn't. That at least that's where I'm I, at with it. I'm almost sure that his father does know. Yeah, and I mean, it could the, go either way, part, but it confirms. I think that's part sure. of the reason why Monet said that his, the father thought Drew was soft, mm-hmm. and that plays, I think, plays a part in it. It plays. I'm going to have to bring the show up. It plays that empire part of it <laughs> where you know your son is gay and you portray him in your mind as being soft because of it. Mm-hmm. And he's done everything to make Drew step up to prove mm-hmm. he's not soft, even though mm-hmm. he may be gay. Mm-hmm. But I think the interaction between him and Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, what's this voice? E. He called him E at one point. Everett. 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 Yeah. That's a white name. Everett. Their interactions spoke a lot about I guess the way they they want to portray this gay character of he don't want he doesn't want to be down low he doesn't want to be in the closet he like dude I like you you like me why are we hiding this what's the point of hiding it to anybody mm-hmm. their interaction with each other was great the mm-hmm. relationship that he is clearly building with Tariq is also great and questionable and in a sense that um. Who, to whose benefit is that relationship being built? Mm-hmm. Right now, I think it's clearly to Tariq's benefit mm-hmm. that that relationship is being built. Well, but I do believe I that think it Drew, already paid off. I yes. absolutely think it already of paid off. <laughs> of course. But I think Drew, Drew looks at Tariq as his escape. Yeah, oh, 100%. He, he, yeah, he looks at Tariq as his escape. As he was looking at Everett as kind of a, the same thing of not having to be in a lifestyle that he doesn't want to be in, but want to be with Everett. And the way that that blew up in his face, you could tell he was hurt. I didn't uh, expect him to be in a car talking to the kid, but like it, it, it at least shows humanity in that character, which is a really great thing to show. Because again, you could have gone so wrong with his character. It's the same thing we said on P-Valley with Little Murder, where you got to be... You got to be careful not to go the stereotypical route with this character of hiding in the closet and mm-hmm. him not wanting to be seen. Instead, we get the guy who's like, no, like, I like you. I don't care who sees that I like you. I thought that was a brave move by Courtney to show that type of character on TV in this type of show. Yeah. Um, what I liked about it most is that, uh, yeah, it's because it's different. Um, and not stereotypical is a big point, but also too, I think because of just Drew, you know, regardless of sexuality, this is his first coming of showing without hesitation that he is brave. Mm-hmm. He, we, 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 it's always been questioned if he can do the job. And although this isn't a task for Monet, this is still a job for him to say, I need clarity on this situation. Um, yeah. and, 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 and while the drug thing may be firsthand natural to them, you know, this and love can always be kind of complicated. And the fact that he mm-hmm. hit it head on direct in the way he did, um, I think that, you know, we're seeing uh, truly the person that no one believed he can be. And that's him being 100% that direct and getting transparency in front of Diana without any cut cards. He's like, this yeah. is what it is and whatever. And, I, and even, the same, even the same time, he says, look, if we want to work, then like it's not going inter, to inter, interfere with basketball, but you need yeah. to let me know what, what the deal is. So and don't use that as an excuse. Exactly. Not to say that because you're on a basketball team that this can't work. No, exactly. Exactly. So we're not going to like, yeah, because again, I mean, if, if, if ever it took a little bit of time to listen, like, look, no, regardless of this, no one is to come into contact with Zeke and interfere with him. That is the person that's supposed to make it no matter what. We're not yeah. going to do anything to jeopardize that, little if yep. you know it or not. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, Drew sees Tariq as his escape goat is the perfect depiction of what's happening here. Because I think that, again, going back into last episode, Drew being able to be in that classroom setting 
something he's always wanted to do, something that Monet said is not possible. But because Tariq allowed him to do that, it was like a wow, this person right here that everybody has all this, you know, scrutiny about is actually not bad because Mm -hmm. he's in a setting of something I would want to do. He's very fond of that. Then bam, not only was he able to show his artistic skill, he found somebody that likes the same thing he likes and are fond of each other. So like, I think that it's it's weird to me because the assumptions of Monet, Monet to Tariq about how he feels about Drew and who got who back and stuff like that, all that went over my head. I don't think it. I don't think none of that's deep about protecting him and all that other stuff because at the same time, Tariq didn't know. I mean, he could have assumed, but he didn't know. Tariq's never seen that boy uh, shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, I was like, he, like when he said he didn't know, I was just like, he really. But doesn't. he knew. Oh no, he knew who it was. A thousand percent, he knew who it was. I, I, to I be honest, you got to pay a lot. That last conversation that him and Monet had at the end of this episode, that spoke volumes for the rest of this season. Yeah, right, but I get that. But I mean, beforehand, Tariq said, "Oh, Drew's occupied by somebody. I'm out of here." Oh, but so he, he knew who it was. Tariq, Tariq, ain't, Tariq is far from stupid. I don't think I, I, st- exactly I still don't. I, I, but you know what? Here's where, here's where I, I, I beg to differ. He's absolutely brilliant, but a brilliant person don't assume things. So the fact oh, no, that no, no, he's no. never seen Everett without his shirt off, because that's what the picture is. But he right? saw no, no, no. But he saw him attracted to Everett. Right. So you got, but you got to assume because Everett's testing you don't on his arm. No, yeah. no, you, got, you literally got to assume that you go to somewhere where you're the main person you're looking out for is a basketball player. <laughs> I'm 100% sure Tariq knows everybody on that team. And Everett's basketball tattoo is on his arm, which means if you wear a jersey, it just going to be exposed. That. I, I, I don't I, I don't know. Think it's, I don't think it's far stretched. I think Tariq knew exactly who it was. And he, I, he almost confirms it by saying, I had to see how this would play out. I had to see how the pieces would play. Because when she said, why didn't you tell me? And Tariq said what he said. That's proof that he knew exactly who it was. I, but he also knew, I don't know if I should tell you yet, because I need to see how this is going to play out. Okay. I mean, I yeah, I, I can see it going either way. But I, I again, I think like, I, I, for me, when I first seen that scene, I was like, oh, Tariq just found a way to get out here because he sees Drew's distracted. And when it came down to saying who it is, I mean, you can't drive Monet. You gotta, you gotta know exactly what it is. So it's either, uh, it's it's black or white here. And because he went white and saying like he didn't know, and maybe he probably did. There's, there's no like gray area of like it could have been. That's why. I, and maybe you're right when he was just like, well, ask Zeke because Zeke's definitely going to tell you who it is. But hey, that's that was the key part right there when he said ask Zeke. He but knew who it was. he knew. But who at the, was but at the same time too, Zeke is the big star. Zeke know everybody. So you know. But he he knew exactly. Just who that just to your was. point, you said like everybody knows everybody on the basketball team, but also the basketball team know everybody. So it's about went. it's about being observant. Like I could see two people interact with each other and know literally. Okay, I see that. So when she shows him that, he knows. He's like, ah, oh, okay. But he also knows I don't need to play this card right here. Yeah. It ain't the time and place to play this card. I think that's what he did there. F- funny thing is, I will add this b- to to your point, is that everything that Monet was telling Diana about being the head of the games, probably why she couldn't get ahead of Tariq, because he's always thinking ahead. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll come after that. Um, who is next? I guess it's my turn. It's up to you. Oh, man. I, I You know what? We brought his name up. We'll just go there with an easy another person, and that's Zeke. Now... <sighs> Zeke, the star basketball player who came to the liquor store because that's the spot. Everybody got they, everyone got the. First of all, the fact that Zeke talking about they don't car him. How old is how old is Zeke? I guess he's supposed to be like Tari- Tariq's age, isn't he? Oh, that's right, that's right. Because he he's definitely a one and done. Yeah. So yeah, he's eight. He's yeah, eighteen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, okay. Cool. Up, so yeah, not going. Yeah, because twenty one is the legal age. Duh. But it's been a long. It's been a long time. Yeah. <laughs> But they, they don't car basketball player. Ever. True that. True that. You, you're right about that. Yeah. Um, so that made sense for him to say they don't card me. They wouldn't. You're yeah. the star basketball player. True that. 
Hey, you're right about you that. You don't even buy the liquor. They give it to you. You're right about that, too. Hey, <laughs> I, I, sign this for me, and you get whatever you want in here for free. Oh, man. Imagine if they went with that angle with the boosters and stuff like that. Oh, hey, man. I am waiting for it, because that's the <laughs> angle that should be played here. Uh, Matter of fact, it is being played. Uh, that's how Tariq got there. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's his boosters. Say, hey, he True. has to pass. True that. True that. True that. They're doing it. They, they're doing it and not the Derrick Rose way where they're just like, hey, we're just gonna boost the scores. All right, don't don't nobody say nothing. Hey, they're not doing it the North Carolina way. Let's create this African American class with all the basketball players in it and give them all A's. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, now Zeke. I mean, again, this episode with Zeke, we get again a, another really unconventional character zeke the star basketball player he goes to the liquor store he gets the invite to the party he tries to hit on the girls or you know getting the norm here mm-hmm. but then he goes to the party he's like all right i'm not feeling this i'm out typically that's not really the thing star basketball players or just celebrities shall i say they usually soak in that environment well if you think i'm being stereotypical here and i may not be knowing what i'm talking about you're wrong because Zeke confirmed it himself upon the <laughs> conversation with Carrie, which they revisit this. Now we know Zeke was always fond of Miss Carrie, the therapist mm-hmm. slash uh what what's really her role? The uh, sex therapist. Yeah, she yeah. clearly she might as well be one because <laughs> she had sex in almost every episode. Def, <laughs> definitely, 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 definitely burning that clause. Not to mention Jabari did not use his this this week. I'm cool with that. But um, <laughs> he tried, though. He definitely he really did. Tried. He definitely did. But um, Zeke and Miss Carey, he got him a milf. I mean, first of all, I want to say this, too, that the conversation that they had with each other, I thought was the most empowering conversation that we had from a professor all of all this show. Um, she really put into perspective about. You know how uh for oh I forgot about something else important too. We also got a little a little bit of a background with Zeke family. Dad's not around and his mom's not fit, shall we say? He said don't really got that conversation. He moved in with his aunt uh upon yeah. getting into yep. Hmm? So you know who that aunt is. Yep. Yeah. So uh at this point now. You know, he's he, he's he's opening up to her, and I don't think he was opening up in a way to like seek advantage. I think he was actually being really vulnerable. Um, and she put down some uh vulnerability or a little bit of vulnerability on her own. I mean, she ducked a call from Jabari, good for her. I mean, she was just getting it. Yeah, but the, the, that that was telegraphed that she was gonna fuck Zeke. Oh, 100 percent. It wasn't Tariq though, but it was Zeke. Yeah. Close enough. Hey, hey. Hey, one student, she fucked his thing. <laughs> this, this is, these, again, these are the worst professors. Doesn't make her no better than Jabari here. I'll keep it 100. They're worse. Yeah, is it? Same same, same situation here. So. But as for Zeke, it was just a, I think it was a, his episode here was a means to an end to show Carrie's weakness. And her weakness is still Jabari. And I don't think she sleeps with Zeke without receiving that phone call. And the moment she received that phone call, she took the nearest, for lack of a better term, the nearest meet near her and <laughs> took that instead of going to him. So I think we, we once we get to talk to her, maybe I'll get dive into what I think her issues are. But as it pertains to Zeke, I think he's been plotting on this one. He always wanted her. And uh-huh. He has not hid that he wanted her. Mm-hmm. And this was just a Perfect opportunity. So, so a w- quick question: Do we take Zeke work as being genuine with him saying, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm pretty much a come up and all this other stuff, which is true. But like, did he I say think, that to I'm be open, open, or did he try to use that to kind of like manipulate her? A uh, little bit of A and a little bit of B. I think self acknowledgement is great. He understands the role he plays in some women's lives, but he was also using it to have sex with her. And the main reason I could tell that is his interaction with Riley in the episode where he clearly would have had sex with her if she'd have showed an ounce of interest in him. I tell you what, I tell you what else happened just to kind of make this make a little bit more sense. You know, when anybody's using any type of, like you said, uh, self acknowledgement, something that Carrie, you know, struggles with, that's why she goes mm. to the therapist. Zeke ain't smart 
worth a worth a shit, shall I say? The fact that he came off super intelligent, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> she is, he literally just lied to her about a book review that she know he didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and then magically he he hit a few smooth words and gave him draws up with no problem. So I mean kudos to Zeke this episode. Great, that's, great power move. Because that's what yep. that, that was a power move. That's yep. a great power move. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess oh, next one is up to me. And I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit a quick character and it ain't gonna be curry like it, it should be curry, but it's not. I'm gonna do Kane. Let's get him out of the way because he ain't right. really it's not much to talk about this episode. Yeah, like, I mean we see him getting schooled again <laughs> with Tariq in a car. Like <laughs> at, at this point, we we see his interactions with Monet at the beginning because of Detective, I don't want to call Ramirez because you know I was about to say Rodriguez. Yeah, Ram- Ramirez, <laughs> Detective Ramirez. Like, mm-hmm. but that was all manipulated by Tariq. Tariq wanted to get his reaction to be that, especially with the little line at the end. Man, it must cost a fortune to keep somebody like that in your pocket. <laughs> like, Tariq knew exactly what it is, and he knew exactly why they had him in his pocket. But it led to Kane being the hothead. Like that, that's it shows his greatest weakness. He's always going to be a hothead no matter what. And he can't control it. So while he has greater aspirations in organization, he could never achieve them because he doesn't think ahead at all. Everything is immediate with him. Between that interaction with Monet and then the later interaction with Monet about. <laughs> Tariq and giving up the burner. It's the same thing. It's the same reaction over and over yeah. and over again by this character. Yeah. I hate to say it, but I, I think Kane little literally looks at Tariq as his little brother. And he's just so, I think he's just so mind blown that, you know, this stranger, as he called him, is actually mm-hmm. about that life. I think he's, I think he usually assesses a situation especially something in this environment, he usually assesses the situation correctly. And the fact that he's been so wrong about Tariq, he's kind of, I, I'm going to say doubting himself, but I, I, I definitely think that he, uh, he, he, he's realizing he needs to reevaluate things just a little bit different here. Mm-hmm. Now, yes, he's a hothead, but I think there's a shit ton of respect for Tariq that he's unwilling to admit. And I think, again, he, he, at some point, I mean, even him picking him up for the meeting, which I know is for the meeting. There's a lot of me that feels like he picked up his little brother there and that his little <laughs> brother's starting to grow up. And he's just like, damn, truth. You know what I mean? I, I know people want them to be against each other. I don't see it happening. I, I don't see it happening. I clearly see them being against each other. There is no little brother relationship with Kane sees him as a threat. And when you are a blunt instrument and you see someone else as a threat, your only reaction is to take him out as a threat. I don't think he wants any form of relationship with Tariq. He is not interested. I think everything is for him. You, this little this little dude got to go. I say this for right now. I don't agree. But once we start seeing the chess pieces move, that's when I think there's going to be some very, very vivid issues. The, the actual big tre- chess piece the move that happened at the end of this episode is really going to like turn Kane all the way mm-hmm. against Tariq. Mm-hmm. That big chess chess move made at the end of this episode, which again, I'm pretty sure everybody noticed it, but once you sit back and analyze it and you understand that part of that move was actually to turn Kane against Tariq, it's going to be a hell of a thing moving forward. <laughs> all right. I'm going to pick up a new character that we haven't talked about at all this season. And this character is Zyana because um, Tariq is a slick motherfucker with that. <laughs> it was like, who, what's her name? Zyana. I was like, dog, get, get him out of here. But no, Diana, the last piece of the puzzle to this, uh, to, I always forget the last name. Uh, whatever it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, We're doing them. I, I gotta say, at this point, I am I am of loss of words for her role here. I mean, she's trying to learn the game, and that's not happened. 
She's there for her brother. She's kind of envious of Tariq, but I don't think it hurt her. I think she was just like, I, I gotta step my I, I gotta step my game up. So um I don't I don't have much from Diana right now. I don't pose a threat in this love triangle that's kind of going on right now. Mm. Uh, I don't think she's I don't think she's like she at the points where I thought she was gonna be a little bit more pivotal, she wasn't. So I think Diana is definitely probably the one whose story arc isn't the most appealing to me right now. Uh-oh. And and also take it, it will be more of a factor the second half of the season. But if right now, I just see her, I see obviously I see Monet trying to instill more trust in her, but obviously doesn't, uh, because she still has a lot more ways to learn. And I think that. Right now, I think she's just genu- I think she genuinely likes Tariq to an extent that she's unconfident of her really establishing that relationship with him. So that's where I look at it. I don't see much depth here. What I'm waiting to see with her, and it was a key conversation with her and Monet when she said, Your way didn't work. Mm-hmm. I need to see what Diana's way is because okay. I believe she has an actual thought process of how to break down Tariq. But Monet is overpowering and her wanting her to do it her way. And again, everybody's way don't work the same. Just because mm-hmm. it worked for you don't mean it's going to work for me. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what we got to wait and see is when Tariq doesn't see her coming, what happens? Like Tar- Tariq played this out. He knew exactly how Monet was going to play it because to me, she telegraphs everything. But when we get to a point of seeing Diana just react in her own way without Monet's input, I think that's when we get to see how this could play out. And that's what I'm waiting for to happen. Mm. Like right now, I think they're, they're, I think they're purposely downplaying her for her to be revealed to be a much bigger problem for Tariq than he ever saw coming. Okay. Yeah, the Tejada family. I keep getting it confused. I don't know why I'd be whatever. But yeah, it's the last piece of the Tejada family. And again, maybe, but right now, I know I just have episode five and this being the finale, nothing from her besides her getting a new name from Tariq. He tried to play her in front of Lauren, and that was slick as hell, but we'll, we'll call it what it is. Because remember, if anybody's not keeping up with this, Lauren saw uh, Diana text him, uh-huh. and she said, who's that? So Tariq, thinking on his feet, says, uh, yeah, this is Zion. <laughs> like, nigga, we know who that was. Stop playing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Oh, no, this is you. I, I named Kane. Didn't, yeah, this literally ba- ba- jumped on. Oh, wait, no, you did do. Uh, yeah, this did Diana or Zion, right. wh- whoever Zion. you want to call her today. Diana, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go to a big character because I, I want to talk about this character now, and that, and that is Monet. Okay. And everything they were getting from Monet. Um, this episode again starts off and shows her biggest weakness, which to me it's it's becoming her planning out things. They don't fully make sense to say I need to know what Tariq's operation is, and then the way and the people you're sending in would never be able to break Tariq. So, and then you're sending in a, you're sending them to him, obviously. Like and like, he, like he needs to be oblivious to fall for her tricks here. I think the biggest the biggest elements of her in this episode was one having that conversation with Diana about how to control girl Monet. code, just dropping all all yeah. of it. <laughs> but her not understanding that, you know, that type of code worked for the nineties, the early two thousands, but it may not work now. Yeah. We're seeing that she may lack the ability to adapt on the spot the way she needs to. But we also see by the end of the episode, her ability to know what a person needs and to use it. Because to me, again, I said, again, said earlier that she's always the way she's came at Tariq so far was wrong. But at the end, when she realizes, I think you come at someone like Tariq as a, as a parent figure. And I think a lot of it could have to do with what Drew told Tariq earlier. Now I need to find out if that was Monet's entire plan, because if it was, that's a brilliant plan because the seed was planted by Drew when Drew said, 
hell, she may even see you as one of her kids. And then for her to end it that way, when she said, what kid should I trust? And Tariq says, me. And my nigga, but come in, you're just like family. That's a move. That's yeah. strictly a move too. And that's a that's playing to Tariq's need to have a parent figure. And understanding that you need to play that role with him because at times that can be the easiest way to get to him. Because well, you well, can't make it obvious. Because we saw earlier with Jabari, when Jabari was overly powerly trying to be like this head black man figure for Tariq, and that's not what Tariq wants. Well, well, I, I, just to reel you back just a little bit here, Dow. Stick to your guns. We Monet has not been good in executing plans entirely. This is way too big of a one for her to have planned this all the way out. And if it becomes powerism, then it is. But right now, I'm I going with. If it is, it is. But as of right now, for five episodes, I'm going to say that there's no way that she could have thought this all out. However, she coincidentally falls into something that truly works for her. And that is because we've seen Tariq this entire episode deal with the struggle of being alone. Mm-hmm. The fact of he he's still grieving over Raina, um, the 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 black daddy big man complex that he had with Jabari, which he completely had. I mean, it's true. It's it's Tariq in his in his purity. You know, he's never going for anybody trying to take that daddy of uh, authority. But Monet coming and his relationship with his mom, and we know how much he loves Tasha mm-hmm. because of that's what this whole damn series is about. But Monet coming and talking about son, you know, the whole son thing, and it works out. And it's a way that, first of all, I love how that scene was shot, and maybe she didn't realize that's what she was going to get. But here we are. But it just works so much. But also, I think what happens, and why I think this is such a, a really good scene to end off the first half, is that the the um the theme of probably two was choose your side. And I think now everyone keeps saying, you know, you know how everybody is. I can't wait till Monet kills Tasha or Tasha kills Monet, who, by the way, have not spoken to each other yet. So yeah. this That's battle that they were going to have, it's not even on cut. But it's now it's the idea of like. Well, who's Tariq allegiance really going to be towards now? Choose your side. You got somebody yeah. embracing you as a mom one way, and you and, and, and Tasha's definitely giving him love on another way. But like, that's the story to be told here. What is Tariq going to do now that he's being pulled by two women he may thoroughly end up respecting? It would before it was his mom and, and dad, and that was the no brainer here. But now this one may be a little bit more questionable, especially when he start really getting the whole family aspect and is built on trust Especially when she started doing things for him that unfortunately his mother cannot currently do for oh, 100%. him. 100% or, or, or if it's just her being honest with him. Yeah. And that's all he's ever wanted is to be honest. That's so. Clearly that's all he's ever wanted was a parent to be 100% honest with him. Yeah. And she, he sees throughout all Monet's flaws, her mm-hmm. biggest strength is she's always 100% honest with her kids. Mm-hmm. And I know this is about Monet, but I will say, like, um, because it's very intertwined with Tariq here, uh, Monet, you know, again, dropping the girl code with uh, Diana. You know, she's just trying to figure out which one of her kids she can trust. Carrying uh, 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 Ramenez, uh, what Wait, does Zach get his name wrong now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my man. goodness. Ramirez, Ramirez excuse me. Ramirez. You said Ramirez. Um, you know, carrying him to make a to make a point about um, mm-hmm. you know the control that she has. Um, but he a but, sucker because that 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 oh. was a control. That was just him being a sucker. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. But at, at the same time, too, I mean, I this isn't a strong Monet episode. It just was storytelling that happened here in little tidbits that really brought everything that's happened these first five episodes together. So I think, you know, again, because it's a mid season finale, you know, this is a point where you do do a little small of a reset going into episode six. So you had to close some things off. We don't, we don't want Monet talking about trust and what what does he do for a plan? No more. She's done it for five episodes now. So now that we kind (laughs) of close that off, we like, we know he, she trusts him. Now I think we know that she's decided her kids can't get the information, so she needs to get the information. That's why, that. said, yeah, that's why I said that end was so important. It's at that point she knows they can't get it, so she's like, "I'm gonna get it," and I know the angle to play here, mm-hmm. which is I, the I, 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 I the don't family, know the family he doesn't have. 
I don't. Yeah, see that. I I want. I really want to hear that verbatim. I don't want to go too far with that because again, I I I like to. I like to be more confident in the idea. Of first five episodes, she cannot execute a plan, and she's been swinging in all directions. And maybe, just maybe, she finally landed on the right one. Hey, but I want to see how far she goes with it. Yeah. Does she go the complete parenting thing, or do she just embrace it? Yeah, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. This True. was a shot that she's probably like, I need to take this shot of seeing if this will work and fully embracing Tariq. Because if I fully embrace him, he'll share eventually. And you you, you want to play that card. And not to mention, too, I will say this. The only wrinkle is this is that there has to be um, there has to be a, a villain or enemy coming. Kane. And who? Kane. Probably so. I mean, that's what I see is the, the person who's clear. He is heated. He clearly is not getting along with Monet right now. And, I see, and that's so weird. I didn't get that energy friend. from him. I didn't really? get that energy. I, I and he I, said when they were speaking and he said, nah, this is my motherfucking house too. Like, that's the challenge. You don't say that. How often would you think a black kid raised by a mother of his of her nature would ever say that? That's him stepping up and him like, nah, I'm a man. And you need to explain this to me. And she's had to like try to calm him down. Like do what I said <laughs> twice in one episode. Matter of fact, three times. So three or four times so far in this series, she's had to do that to Kane. And that's because I think he believes he should be bigger than he is. And he's going to eventually see her and Tariq as an obstacle that he has to go through. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I guess me, I'm, I'm, I'm still again. I want, I want to see more of it, and I, I love the fact that I'm intrigued. I mean, I would love for him, I would love to see him go that route, and I also love to see him play buddy buddy with Tariq, and they actually get some things done. I would love to see Kane be the one to flip Tariq from this trajectory that we've had, you know, that we accustomedly don't really see him to, is, and that's Tariq being. Who is Tariq right now? We're going to talk about Tariq because Tar whoever the hell Tariq was in power is not the same person in power book. <laughs> this dude is on all cylinders working. He's nailing the schoolwork. He's 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 speaking up for himself. He's speaking up to authority. We'll, we'll just say Jabari. He's handling his love interest in the way he has. His roommate situation, he stood up to Monet. <laughs> He showed no flaws this way. I mean, I even think that the whole idea of him grieving and the whole Raina thing, um, and even going back with his dad and having that conversation. I mean, besides sax BS, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing bad to say about Tariq right now. Because he's they, they're turning him into James. No, they're not. He really? is different from James. You, and I want to make sure I read this completely right because I definitely said that he's not pay attention to the moves being made. But that's all you got to do is pay attention. So, to so, so I want I want to be clear before I say this. You say they turn them to James, but they're not turning them into ghosts. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? A hundred percent, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. All right. I can hey, get with you that. Know, I did not say he, they're turning him into ghosts. I said they're turning him into James. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. All his moves are very James like. Yeah, because he, he he you know like he said he's even even at the end at the cemetery when he said I had to do it and you would be the only person to understand why mm -hmm. he, he's turning into James and I think that's something that should happen because yeah. whenever you fight a parent and you're fighting that parent all the time they always say you fight the one who you're closest alike to yeah and, and, and that, no and that's what he's doing here. And I was gonna say he's not he's not ghost because he's not lying. When he went to Tamika, I mean, mm -hmm. though he didn't give her the one hundred percent truth, but he did head on about almost everything, which is is the complete contradiction to what Ghost would have did. So Ghost is a killer instinct that Tariq doesn't have. One hundred percent, and he wasn't even gun. I mean, he was gun toting, but he wasn't trigger happy. That yeah. that that gun didn't even come out once. Ghost would have shot it. Tamika right then and there. One hundred percent need for a discussion. 100%. But again, that's that's being raised and brought up differently. Yeah. So he's being raised and brought up to think more, which is the more of James part. Yeah. Thinking through all your situations. And that's what we're seeing with Tariq is him thinking through everything. Mm -hmm. The drug thing was just throwing him off because he didn't suspect his boy would drug him. 
like that that's that's not a thought process that will pop into his head. Yeah. So that show vulnerability, but every other moves is really a James move. Okay. James made those type of moves throughout the entire series of power. He I can made get, those type of moves. I can get with that. Yeah, I, I, again, that's why I like I, I don't think there's nothing bad to say about Tariq here. I, I oh, love no, no, no. I loved it. First of all, beyond that, Michael Rainey Jr., this is an amazing acting episode for him, too, uh, in all scales. First of all, again, who the hell is Tariq? Tariq tried to throw hands at the party. He carried a girl. He went and faced Tamika and and and, and wasn't afraid to, to... First of all, he executed the plan by himself. Mm-hmm. And then and then icing on the cake at the end of the episode with him and Monet. I mean... Who the hell is Tariq right now? I want to know what happened to that leap year that we didn't see him go from this idiotic kid to this young man who's just holding his own at. College is good, but it ain't that good. What happens when you are forced to step up as the man? I think that plays plays a big part of because it's the equivalent of, for some people, not all. So please don't say nothing in the comments about not all people do this. For some people. (laughs) If you're young and you become a parent, you have to step up immediately. Life, yeah. life, like presents itself to you, and you're like, "Fuck!" I either can accept what I what I have to do, or mm-hmm. I can still try to fight it. And I think the same thing happened with Tariq the moment James died, and James didn't leave him any money. I think so. Keep Grandma. in mind, his whole purpose of this is, I need to get through school because I need to take care of my family. Yeah. So his mindset switched. From a spoiled kid to I need to be the man of this family. I need to be the breadwinner. So when that switch clicks, it makes you grow up. It makes you make better and stronger decisions. And it makes you stick by those decisions. And I think that's what we're getting with Tariq is that he's he's being forced into a role that while not fully prepared for it, he understands what's necessary to do it. I agree. I agree. We got so many other characters to talk about, and we're kind of running up on our time. So let's kind of just run through them really, really fast. Now, Sax. Oh, 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 like quick hit, quick hit segment. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Yeah. Sax. First of all, Sax must be stressing because he had very evident bags under his eyes this episode, and that cannot overlook that. Uh, if you go back and look, <laughs> Sax, yes. Sax looked like he was oh, hurting. So, yeah. Sax was looking like the little um whatever his name is from Doctor Strange when the little joint started creasing over his eyes like mm-hmm. Sax was having it rough but um hey, that's, and they played it perfect because he's only worried because Tamika testified yeah. all you know, that stress and all that weasel shit but um I I wish we could have got the idea of seeing Tamika on on stand to uh light his ass up but I need, I need somebody eventually to explain to me I cannot explain to me. How you're going to go from Cooper Sack so Tariq, and that automatically puts us that Tariq is the murderer. I need you connected for me to make it make sense because it doesn't make sense. All that would tell me is Tariq was present. That's it. It literally does not exclude Tommy from being the killer. It literally says Tariq was present. What it does do is make you question everything about Sacks. And I think they moving way too fast to try to get to what we get at the end of this episode with Sax. Instead of taking her time to focus that, that doesn't exclude anything that Sax needs at all. It doesn't make sense to me. I am so I hate I first of all, I like Sax character. I like I like the creation of Sax character because it's it's so triggering. But as a person who consumes this show, I hate the fact of Sax being let off the hook left and right over and this over guy has had so many get out of jail for free cards it makes no sense and some of the logic around it is starting to cloud my mind because i'm starting to dislike him to the point that i'm starting not even able to be rational about the things that are happening i'm glad you said it how is what's w- w- the, the transaction of words exempt the fact that tommy couldn't have been there by the way tommy was there so how couldn't Tommy have been a possibility? It of makes it? no sense. It literally makes no sense. I would have to be boo boo the fool to try to say, "Oh my God!" Then that means to reach shot. No, it doesn't. Oh, it, oh, oh, Uncle Nancy is killing me right now. I'm tired. I'm tired of Uncle Nancy protecting her son and her saying, "I didn't want my son involved. That's why I didn't say he was there." But Tommy killed Ghost. 
guess what? Who the fuck is going to question that? Is yeah, Tommy but- out of the blue to say he didn't do it? Yeah, no. I mean, where where is Tommy, folks? You know, if he, you know, you know, if he didn't do this, why did he, he just Tommy automatically gone? I need Riley to die. Oh like, everything God. Riley needs to die now. Yeah, she's going to be a casualty for sure. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I I thought she was going to flip, but she's definitely she's definitely on on like. She's definitely on the hot seat with this character. Um, mm-hmm. And she's basically baby Sax. And they can't dispose of Sax. So if you want to get rid of a Sax character, it has to be a, a reincarnation of Sax. So, Which in turn flips him the moment she dies. Yep. So baby Riley. Hey, speaking of a character, we end up going through Riley. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Her, <laughs> her, her drug in my man. Her Everything about it was just... Yeah, and, and also too, like <laughs> the reason not to have iPhones, because I'd be goddamn if okay. you're telling me if someone unlocks my phone with my face, you can then pinpoint something where you know exactly where I'm going at all times. That must be an iPhone thing. I I, I have an Android, I don't know, but I'm assuming this is an iPhone thing. Moving on, because uh wh- whatever it is is a fuckboy thing. <laughs> Not it's possible, but not into the extent that Tariq wouldn't have noticed it. Like I about to say, don't wouldn't your phone tell you? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I, don't know. I guess and we gotta Sa- go. And Sax got across town in a power way. Because <sighs> yeah, no, Game of Thrones way. Say something and then well, no, Tariq did have chi- time to change his clothes. So there's no telling. I but, just, but we I just, just go to that character. I, I just didn't understand. Tariq got <laughs> Tariq got dressed to go to a funeral. Um, he got, by the way, he was drugged and he and he uh, completely changed uh, wardrobe. And Sax He's meets him boy. there. He's a bad boy. And Sax met him there and decided to record him because that's what I do when I find someone at a grave site is I automatically think I need to record this. Yeah, because... Like, because like they're what they're not on speaking terms. They were just together before, so Sax didn't decide to actually call out to him and speak to him. Oh, okay. here's the fucked up part though. I'm gonna ask again. What did Tariq say on that tape that makes you? Do you know a good lawyer could one? David was right. It's not admissible. None of that. But a good lawyer could hear that same exact thing and say. At what point did he say I killed him? Yeah, yeah. Also, Tariq, there's this cop car that like went behind you and the lights was blinking. He didn't even <laughs> so power. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We could talk to Tamika still still bomb. I, I love the Bob. Yeah. You're usually <laughs> killing it at home with the with the comfy uh skims Kim Kardashian collection outfit you had on. <laughs> like to me- she- Tamika's been killing it ever since she left that damn DA's office, Joe. Tam- Tamika, Tamika wants to know how does everybody have her air dress? How? <laughs> how does Tariq just show up? And then, but I love the point that she addresses it and they address it. And she's like, how the hell does everybody all of a sudden have my address? <laughs> yes, that is a question we are all wondering. One, um, how the fuck did David feel so comfortable to say, wait a minute, sex in there? Move basically move aside as I bust into your house illegally. <laughs> come on now, come on, come on. But we, we, we gotta talk about that scene. That's gonna be the last thing to talk about. I want to go really quickly to Tasha. Um, so Tasha and Tariq, they, that's the, the the dynamic with them is really what um the 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 title of the episode is about. Yes, give the magi, and it's basically um if anybody doesn't know it's about when two people gave each other gifts and they were basically unable to use them Mm -hmm. uh and what happened here is you know we got tasha who's just you know still in jail but still trying to first of all tasha is going through it in jail she's having um flashbacks and 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 she got lip gloss though she definitely has lip gloss (laughs) Her lip gloss, though. Time out, time out, dog. I'm getting sick of sax. I just forgot about something. Let, let me not forget that real quick. <laughs> Ta- Tasha, yeah, with her lip gloss, with her Bible, and she's working out. So Tasha's definitely going through it, having flashbacks and, right. and 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 basically hallucinations of Raina. Which and Raina hey, had more words. Raina. We, Raina had more words than the other little girl. We just got her smiling. That's true. And, Damn, they always find a way for Raina to give more words than her. Somehow. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Y'all better stop playing with Yaz and give Yaz. Yaz got, Yaz I couldn't got, say happy birthday, Tariq. Two like, seconds. 
two seconds on the screen. Ooh. Not to mention that was the biggest, most accurate depiction of a black son's birthday at his finest. The chocolate cake and the extra high notes on the happy birthday song. Y'all look, yep. if you don't know, now you know. That's mm-hmm. how it goes down, just like that. But um, so Tasha was in jail and she was talking to Tariq and Sax had somebody eavesdrop on there and find out. <laughs> if I wasn't if I wasn't mistaken, I thought Tahada had the jail on lock. How does Sax have a person in there as well? There's no telling. Everybody got the jail on lock, man. That it's power. There's certain things we're just not supposed to ask questions about. I have come to that conclusion, and this is one of them. I'm not supposed to ask questions how Tasha can answer this phone at all times of night. When are they tossing the cell in there where we find the cell phone? I ain't seen them toss nothing in no power episode. She has the cell phone. She's perfectly fine. She places calls all time of night. Tariq called her when he was clearly at a party at 9 o'clock at night, maybe 10 o'clock. How the hell was he going to go see his mama? Tell about I can still come see you. Nigga, what Definitely. prison are you getting into? Visiting yeah. hours in at 8 o'clock. Like, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> I'm so I'm so done. I'm so done. And hey, where's Tasha friends at in prison that she got fresh cornrows every week? <laughs> I need to know. Who who is doing Tasha's hair in prison? And makeup at this point. Who's doing her hair and makeup in prison? Oh my god. Do they got right. fancy prison? Something. I need I need a, an explanation here of how Tasha gets her makeup done every week in prison. Yeah. <laughs> Guess the, the last more, character is David. Yeah, I was just gonna say the more and more I think about these things, you're just saying the more and more I just start saying, like, I loved episode four, episode <laughs> five. <I'm> just... <laughs> hey, it's the just, po- it's the just, powerisms are coming out it, strong. It so much stuff. And I was just like, I think Tasha was the last draw. When I said, wait a minute, she got on lip gloss. <laughs> like, I, I, I you can do a naturally beat face where I still don't notice that she has on makeup. And you didn't do that. You decided to go full makeup in prison. Mm. With this Bible that she clearly snuck in prison with this picture yeah. of Ghost and Raina. And why that picture? <laughs> like, you ain't got no picture of just Raina by herself? Like, nothing? Mm. Clearly you don't give a fuck about Ghost. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. But, David. Yeah, so I guess the big question is, how is that going to play out? I mean, Saxon Davis say they're going to join forces and they're going to put Tariq in jail. Uh, Davis says he doesn't care because his client is Tasha, gotcha. and that's a win. So the thing about it here is that they they spoke about the things that, you know, legally aren't legal, but they're somehow going to, these two now corrupt <laughs> lawyers and attorneys are going to figure out oh. a way to flip this Oh, David is not corrupt at all. He's a thousand percent right. Well, okay. If I, as a defense attorney, my job is to get my client off. I'll give a, he should get, he should not get two blanks about Tariq. And if he can use Tariq to get his client off, that's his job. Yeah. So I'm not gonna say he's corrupt. What he what he's, he's doing shady. though? He's shady. Sax is corrupt, and no one's on Sax here at all. Yes. yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sax is 100 corrupt. Because in all honesty, though, David doesn't even have to go this far. He could literally just put Tamika on the stand and let everything come out. I don't need Sax. He puts Tamika on the stand. Tamika says what she says. Sax attempts to defend himself by trying to get this video of Tariq saying he killed him. Guess what? David still wins. I don't need you. That's the only part I didn't understand. He he literally needs sex for nothing mm-hmm. at all. I can put everybody on the stand. I got Tamika testify. Once she testifies that Cooper was at Truth, that's it. Guess what? Tasha immediately is going to get out of jail. I ain't got nothing to do with every other part of what you're talking about. You know about. what? And I got, let's be honest now. It's, it's got to happen this way. And what's going to happen is that what's going to happen is Tariq it's not going to go to jail because of him being on the stand, but it will release Tasha, which will finally get Tasha out of jail, which we can, I, you know what? I'm not going to speculate on this too much because we run over our time, but like there's a lot they can do. And I feel like the things that they were kind of building up with Tasha in jail hasn't manifested anything, but 
is also is even more intriguing with her being out of it. And even if she's out of it for only like one or two episodes, there's still a lot that could be done. Yeah, because where my girl at? I ain't seen my girl in two episodes now. Exactly. Like, yeah, and then and then the, uh, the prison guard. We ain't seen her for two episodes. Yeah, and then Lorenzo's in jail. I mean, are, are they ever going to meet? I, I mean, they, sh- they shouldn't because once you're being a female jail and once you're being a male jail. True. Right. 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 I mean, but it doesn't matter because he is he has his whole apartment in jail. No, he got a condo. You, yeah, a high- and Coronas, <laughs> and Coronas in jail. <laughs> like, I understand. Back in movie logic, one hundred and one is that the head kingpin gets whatever he wants in jail. So I have no issue with that. But we need to, we do need to have discussions about Tasha. Not in this yeah. episode, but as the season go on, discussions about Tasha and what's her end game here. Because if your end game is just to say you did it to save Tariq. Do it and get it over with. You're, you're unnecessarily dragging out things here. Yeah. Because once she told them, I want to take a deal, there's nothing Davis should be able to do. You think she's going to ever let Tariq take the stand before she says, I plead guilty? Yeah. No. It's never yeah. going to happen. I, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, power. That's the power. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know we ain't mentioned Lauren, but uh, Lauren is not dealing with a drunk Tariq. And also, Lauren is definitely about to uh, go ahead and uh, give Malcolm his papers. So, hey, hey. Lauren was not about that save a nigga lifestyle. <laughs> this nigga passed out. She didn't call 911. Not even. She didn't check a pulse. She got up and left. <laughs> like, are you serious? I was just talking to you and I passed out. And you didn't even check to make sure his eyes was up. You know what? No. Lord, Lord, he needs to leave Lauren alone. She's clearing that not down at all. <laughs> Dude, is there anything else we need to cover on this episode? I don't think so. I think we ran through every character that matters. <laughs> I don't think I don't think we had another character to run through. I think we did everything. Yeah. Even even yeah, we even talked about Yaz a little bit, Joe. That's sure. As little as her part of just cheesing and smiling was. <laughs> and, then give it, and then making sure to bring back Raina so Raina still has more words than Jazz will get the entire season. That ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous. in the contract that, that <laughs> Raina has to have more words than Jazz every year. So every year, <laughs> Power, they're going to bring back Ghost Raina to make sure she gets more words than Jazz. Yes. Yes. She must be related to somebody in, in on, a, um, on a show or something. because clearly she like two-bit. <laughs> Is she Courtney Kemp's other cousin that we need to know about? <laughs> 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 oh my goodness oh my goodness yo anybody who watched this review you know thank you so much for watching this we'll obviously be back in december i mean this has been a crazy december. episode you know the we, 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 months. yeah going away for months joe yeah that's a covid break for sure hey, that um, is clearly a COVID break no one takes a two-month break at, from at all season at all it's a Season then you might as well just say this is the season finale. It's the new season, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot. Was, it was definitely I mean, a lot to break it. down. What'd you say? <laughs> Bring Trey Song's uh song, please don't. No one wants that. <laughs> no one wants that. Now, it definitely was a lot to break down with all the characters. Um, and as much as this was fun, like there was a lot of powerism things going on. So it kind of was making my head hurt a little bit. But nonetheless, I definitely want to know what you all thought about this episode. What stories do you see going into episode six? I mean, there's a lot of ways they can go about this. But I think for the first half, for the first five episode, Power Book 2 did a good job. I mean, if this was just the season it is, you know, in a short season, um, this would have been so, enough to keep me intrigued, you know, uh, for the next half to come about, which it has done. Uh, but, you know, still for two months, it's kind of silly, but whatever. Nonetheless, uh, that's better uh, better um, sooner than later because we know uh, back in power, I think between season three and season four, it was like two years or something like that. So it's a huge break. So, I mean, yeah. hopefully they come up with, is P-Valley season two debuting during this break? <laughs> power, <laughs> I mean, stars, what are you coming up with in between? Sure. Just, uh, break to take i don't want to watch outlander i need y'all to come up with something this is true this is true uh but yeah definitely let us know what you thought about uh this episode what storylines do you think are going into episode six what would you like to see as always who do you want to see kill who because that's everyone's favorite question and hopefully no one's 
mad about people having sex in this episode because there was only one person doing it. So there you go. Uh, but nonetheless, that would do it for us tonight. Um, this uh, will be our review of episode five, the Smith season finale of Power Book 2. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and we'll catch you all in two months for more Power Talk.